Question number eight, James Shaw. Speaker, <clears throat> uh, my question is to the Minister of Foreign Affairs and reads, how many of the 900 youths that flew to Saudi Arabia on Singapore Airlines in October 2014 at the taxpayers' expense are still alive? Mr. Honourable Murray McCulley. Mr Speaker, officials confirm that all of the 900 youths arrived in Saudi Arabia in good condition. The nature of the project being undertaken in Saudi Arabia makes it impossible for me to provide a specific answer to the question that he asks. However, officials advise that according to the most recent reports, the answer is approximately 850. Supplementary question. Uh, James Shaw, supplementary question. Uh, to the Minister of Foreign Affairs, did he remove the provisions guaranteeing the welfare of the sheep once they arrived in Saudi Arabia because he knew that Suffolk sheep bred for cold climates will not survive the 40 degree heat or because the sheep just happened to get there the same month as the Hajj, a religious pilgrimage which involves the ritual sacrifice of over 700,000 sheep? Honourable Murray McCulley. Mr Speaker, there were three reasons for uh, agreeing to remove the provision that the member refers to. The first was that, as a matter of principle, the Saudi Arabian government found it offensive that we should seek to extend the jurisdiction of New Zealand law uh, onto Saudi Arabian soil. Um, secondly, it was probably unenforceable legally anyway. But thirdly, the Animal Welfare Act 1999 requires the Director General of MPI to have regard to such matters as the previous history of the exporter, the provisions for the animal's welfare during the journey, and all the relevant MPI animal welfare standards and guidelines that seemed to me and to the New Zealand Government to provide the protection that New Zealand wanted. Supplementary. Supplementary question, James Shaw. Um, why do recent satellite pictures of New Zealand trade and enterprises seven and a half million dollar agri-hub in Saudi Arabia to which the sheep were flown show no visible livestock farming in the middle of the desert? Uh, the Honourable Murray McCulley. Speaker, um, I'm, uh, I've received recent reports from officials and for the, from those who are superintending the project who tell me that uh, what is a partially completed project is proceeding well. I don't know what images the member refers to, but what I'll say is that the Green Party are difficult to please on this matter. They wanted us to ban the export of live sheep for slaughter, and the government has renewed that export prohibition. They wanted us to have regard for animal welfare matters, and so the government flew the sheep for the pilot uh, on Singapore Airlines. If the member is telling us that he wants us to fly them business class next time, that's something we'll give consideration to. Supplementary, Mr Speaker. Supplementary question, James Shaw. Does he think it's suspicious that the New Zealand company that won the tender to fly sheep over to Saudi Arabia is in part owned by Mr Al Khalaf, the influential Saudi businessman who was blocking the free trade deal with Saudi Arabia, and is it not also suspicious that only he was kept up to date with the tender process while other tenderers such as Deloitte and PG Wrightson were not? Um, the Honourable Murray McCulley. The uh, contract for the lead provider's position, uh, which is what the member is referring to, was awarded through a tender process was overseen by officials from the Ministry of Foreign Affairs, uh, New Zealand Trade and Enterprise, and uh, an expert uh, who was formerly the chief executive of Landcorp. Uh, I'm satisfied that the New Zealand government procurement requirements were met in that respect. Question number nine, Phil Twain.